Cheap power supply, cheap memory. In fact, we're using two different odd sticks here. We've got a cheap SSD, a cheap Ryzen 3 3100, and a cheap motherboard, and a, unfortunately, kind of expensive graphics card. But this is gonna be right here, a build for 2021 used meets new, where the, really only the new parts here are the case that we're gonna be using with a bit of RGB bling, and the SSD. Other than that, we've got everything else is going to be used and this is going to be one of those builds that is definitely going to hit hard. So let's whip this thing up and see what kind of price performance we can get out of this used meets new banger. If you've got this annoying Windows needs activation message and you want to get rid of it for cheap, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as 14 bucks, after you use the coupon code BFTYC, you can get yourself a legit single end user Windows 10 license today. Links in the description below. So the build is now complete with the graphics card literally just fitting in this build. We also gave that a full clean down and the temperatures are really good. It's at 72 degrees in a 27 degree ambient environment after over 20 minutes on combustor. And you're probably thinking, well, Brian, those temperatures are mediocre, but it's doing this at very quiet volume levels. And it's surprising because this budget case also is very quiet too, and it's drawing out a lot of hot air out of the case. I'll give you guys a quick listen. So, so far, I'm actually very impressed with how this build turned out. And also another trick that we've done here, since we've used two off sticks of memory, one's only a uh, 2400 megahertz stick. That's an old school HyperX 8 gigabyte stick. And then the newer one having a 3200 megahertz XMP profile, we're able to utilize that 3200 megahertz profile off the one stick and then copy it to the other. However, it's not guaranteed to allow this RAM stick to work at 3200 megahertz, the 2400 megahertz stick. But what I found is through uh, one reboot of trial and error, I got it to run at 3000 megahertz with a one to one to one ratio on the memory versus the U clock versus the F clock. So basically this build should be ready to game on. Now before we test out the games, the last part to talk about is these budget cases right here. And this is the Gamdius E1 that I picked up for 59 Aussie dollars, makes it around 45 US. Very cheap considering it's tempered glass. It's got the enclosed power supply shroud. You've got the two fans here, one's on exhaust, one's on intake, right where the graphics card is, by the way, which is pretty good. But testing out this case with the tempered glass on versus off, which is a very quick and easy way to test if a case is decent, especially with its included vents, this Gamdia C1, I'm actually surprised, it's doing a very good job. The difference between the tempered glass on and off is only one degree, where it got up to 72 degrees with the tempered glass on versus off, which only got 71 degrees. So there's a one degree difference. It means that the case and its airflow out of the box is actually very good. And coupled with that low noise, I've got to say straight away, this case is looking like it's a big win. Though it does look like there's some other manufacturers out here with the same chassis. I have seen something similar from Antec as well as MSI. Though I'm guessing if you're looking at the airflow of the case, it does come down to the fans that are included and how quiet and how much air they push through. So this one here, I can vouch for it, the Antec and also the MSI versions. I don't know how they will perform. But finally, let's test out some games where in the previous video we did where we looked at a server PC on a budget, I'll put the link up here, we're gonna test out the same games at the same settings to see how much more FPS this PC can get.
And after all that gaming, we came out with some interesting results with this PC right here, where it was in Cyber Mess 2077. This is what I'm calling it now, because I played this game for about, I think it was like 10 minutes, and there was two really weird bugs. The player was like doing light speed walking through the map, and then there was another bug where like the police officer thing that just disappeared. Like, I, I don't even know what happened there. So the game still is like, that's what I was saying in the previous video, the game's still like buggy. It's even more buggier than when I first played it, which is weird. Anyhow, the FPS here was about 50% higher than it was on the server build. And we'll go through the rest of the results and then we'll talk about the price performance here where in Fortnite, we were getting around 184 average FPS now, which was up from around 160. And that was on the same settings in pretty much, I do benchmark in Fortnite, especially at the exact same spot. So we weren't up that much in percentage terms, even though cyber mess were up by around 50%, we got 45 average there, but this was up maybe like 10 to 20% in terms of its FPS. It depended on the part of the map. But then we went over to CSGO and that was up around about 50% over the previous system. So we're looking at around 10 to 50% more performance in these games with this bill, but the price difference here was this bill costs around uh, 450 US and about in Australia about 592 Aussie dollars. So this build right here is coming in a lot more expensive than the server build, but it is in ways a proper gaming PC, right? We've got a lot of different specs going on here where we've got a better case, it's a lot quieter, it's got some better components in the term of it's got a bigger power supply. It's also got that Ryzen 3 3100. And the funny thing about the 3100 is it's a great CPU in that I think like in some of these games, I couldn't quite figure out what it was, but it was almost like there was a driver bottleneck that was holding back the GTX 980. Because I think the GTX 980 should be a bit more capable in some of these titles where the GPU wasn't being maxed at 100%, nor were the CPU cores being maxed at 100% either. And we did have the memory tuned to a pretty good level here. So I don't think the memory was the problem in this particular build. And so I think if you're going with an older card, like a GTX 900 series, maybe a 700 series, it is important to note that some of these older cards now, they're just not being optimized for even games that they were optimized for previously. In that there's new updates coming out to Fortnite, CSGO and CyberMess. And then those updates aren't really related to the driver updates where Nvidia's dropped the support for the GTX 980, I think. This is what I believe, because I'm just not seeing more FPS as opposed to what I should be seeing. So it's a little bit weird in that, in that regard. I expected a little bit more performance, especially compared to a 1050 Ti, where I know a GTX 980 should be getting quite a bit more FPS than a 1050 Ti, especially. Uh, but we just weren't really seeing that extra gain. And especially on the CPU side, we've got a Ryzen 3 3100, which runs a lot better than a uh, 1220V uh, 5 Xeon, which is essentially an i5-6400. So with this build, ultimately it's one of those cases where it's a really solid build, and I like everything going on here, but in terms of price performance, it's mediocre in that I've done some better builds in the past that will give you a lot better price performance, especially if that's what you're looking for. You're looking to get the most FPS during this uh, pandemic season here in the world, then uh, one, something like this will be, will be solid, but there are some better options that you can look at if you wanna really maximize your dollar. Though I will say this, the last thing I really like about this build is that we've got the option to not only upgrade the CPU in the future, say for instance, a 5600X actually comes in the stock at around MSRP, but we've also got the ability to change the GPU to a 3060 Ti or something when that actually comes into stock as well. So we do have that ACE in the deck if we wanna utilize it in the future. But as it stands in the meantime, you're gonna get a really good gaming experience in piecing together something like this from the used market. And even mismatched memory can be a really good thing. Don't let people deter you if the price is right for 16 gigabytes of DDR4 and it's just two mismatched sticks where you can pick up one eight gigabyte stick here, one eight gigabyte stick there, then you can really do a lot with that and save even more money. And the power supply that we used here today, it's made from a brand called Delta. And Delta are pretty much one of those brands that make a lot of power supplies for the server industry. So they're built very well, but their name isn't as popular in the retail scene as say Corsair and Seasonic. And so if you find a Delta power supply, never overlook that. 
because in this case, the power supply was one of the best deals that we put inside this build here today. And with all that aside, do let us know in the comments section below what you think of today's GTX 980 Ryzen 3 3100 gaming PC. Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always. But I will say one thing before I get on out of here, and that is the uh, build itself. It costs around 592 Aussie. I don't think I'll be making much money at all on this flip. And that's because the market with the prices being expensive for the parts, but the demand being quite low at the moment for gaming PCs around this price point. And that's because last year there was a lot of gaming PCs bought up around this price point, And now they're coming back onto the market where people want to upgrade to a higher end PCs. So there's a real tough spot if you're looking to flip PCs around this price point, at least where I am locally. So that's one thing I'm finding. It's a little bit difficult in terms of flipping these things. So that's a little bit of a heads up for you guys if you're looking to build a PC around this price point to uh, flip it on the used market. Anyhow, do let us know if you have any questions in the comment section below and I'll answer it just like this question of the day here from Bjorn Solom. And they ask, can you recommend a 240 hertz screen that is the absolute best for Battlefield 4 and 5, no bigger than a 27 inch, which is almost as good as the PG259 QNR. That's the ASUS one that we actually have at the studio here. I want the very best screen for FPS, or is the PG25 QNR the best choice? I have the ASUS ROG Strix 2080 Ti graphics card. So that's a good question. Uh, we've checked out both the uh, PG25 QNR, I'll put the link to that review up here. And that monitor's 360 hertz. It's pretty much one of a kind in its class. And I really only suggest this monitor with its really high price tag um, for people who are really on, have a lot of money on the line in pro gaming tournaments. So if that's you, then this is gonna be the best monitor. But in terms of one monitor that comes very close and in certain scenarios is better than the PG25 QNR, that's the Aorus 25 inch. And I'll put the link to that review up here where I personally feel like this monitor at 240 hertz is one of the best monitors you can get as well for a high FPS, FPS games. It's got the low input lag, but it's also a TN panel. So you can put on the overdrive to max settings and you can literally get under one millisecond response times. And at 240 hertz, this is a massive advantage for you guys who are competitive gamers wanting to get the best out of the FPS titles, and especially if you're playing for money too. So hopefully that answers that question. If you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes. Yes content, then you know what to do. Hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.